The human body makes use of two main energy sources, sugar and fat. It can make use of other sources like complex carbohydrates and proteins, but sugars and fats are the norm. However, there are some subtle differences in how these two energy sources are used, which can have implications for human health, exercise and fitness. Probably the most obvious difference between fat and sugar is that sugar is soluble in water, whereas fat isn't. It means that since a high proportion of the body is water, the sugar is easy to transport around the body, dissolved in the blood. This means that liquid is constantly moving around our bodies under normal circumstances, a relatively easy way for the sugar to get where it's actually needed. However, this does mean that a great deal of sugar is used and the overall blood sugar level can drop. So unless more sugar is eaten, or some can be taken out of storage, the body might be in trouble if it relied totally on sugar for energy. Of course, being soluble in water makes sugar rather difficult to store. It can be stored with difficulty, though, in the form of glycogen, in the muscles and the liver. Then it's converted into glucose, and the blood sugar levels run low. The problem with this altering of the molecule so it actually uses more energy to store glycogen than it uses to store fat. Your body normally prefers to store fat rather than glycogen. Now fat has the opposite problem since it isn't soluble in water, it's very easily stored around the body. Additionally the fat molecule is actually quite large, it means they can't readily get through the cell membranes. The problem comes in how to get the, all that energy from where it's being stored where it's actually needed at the right time. Well, fat can actually be broken down into glycerol and fatty acids. These can be carried around in blood serum, delivered to the cells where it's needed. The next difference between the two is the energy. This is the other reason why flat rather than glycogen is a major store of energy in the human body. Fat produces far more energy than sugar for the same weight of starting material. Basically, if your body needed to store the same amount of energy stored it as glycogen rather than storing it as fat, you need to store about twice the weight of glycogen that fat would normally take. So in order to make the human body fairly efficient, it normally only stores about a single day's supply of glycogen in the liver and muscles. The rest of the energy store it relies upon fat. However, because this energy per weight in fat does make burning off excess fat as exercise, a little bit more difficult than it would first appear. So fat is apparently a better way of storing energy. Why does the human body make use of sugar at all? That takes us to the next interesting difference between fat and sugar. Whilst a gram per gram, fat releases more energy than sugar. In order to actually release that energy, both require oxygen. In the general process to burn an energy source like fat or sugar, you need oxygen, the result you get out energy, water and carbon dioxide. The problem with fat is to produce the same amount of energy as burning sugar needs more oxygen than sugar does. Basically because sugar already has a substantial amount of oxygen locked up in the molecules, whereas fat does not. Now when mountain climbers actually adapt to high altitudes, what they tend to do is to increase their red blood cell count, get more oxygen flowing around their bodies. However, people like the Tibetans who genetically adapted to living at high altitudes don't actually have this increase in red blood cell count. Instead, they have a greater reliance on burning sugar for energy than do lowlanders. A result require less oxygen, reducing the same amount of energy. So what are the implications for health on the difference between fat and sugar? Well, whilst not eating for a few days will exhaust all the body's sugar and glycogen reserves. Unfortunately, whilst the body may start to burn some fat for keeping the body warm, then it looks for more unusual sources for energy like proteins. And faced with what looks like starvation, actually burn muscle in an attempt to extend the length of time that the body can survive without food. The downside of this is once the body starts eating again, it assumes that starvation may actually happen at any time again. So it actually lays down additional fat stores just in case this eventuality happens. The starvation diets are a counterproductive way of attempting to lose weight. When you start to exercise, what you actually do though reduce the body's blood sugar level. 
continue to exercise for an extended period of time without getting completely out of breath, you'll also be burning a fair amount of fat as well as sugar. However, because fat has lots of energy for the mass, you need to do an awful lot of exercise to directly burn off the fat. However, it's not all bad news when it comes to burning off fat with exercise. After you actually stop exercising, your bloody body's blood sugar level is now lower than normal. The intake of oxygen is no longer an issue. During normal operation, your body processes still require substantial amounts of energy to keep them going. Your body will now use the fat stores for this purpose, rather than depleted levels of sugar in your blood. This kind of slow fat burn can last for up to 24 hours after a period of extended exercise. However, it may be curtailed if you drink food which has a high sugar content or eat something that has a high sugar content. This will quickly be used to top up the sugar that was lost during the period of exercise. Now this doesn't mean that eating a, a small sugary snack or something similar will stop the fat burn. The sugar loss during an extended period of exercise is more than contained in the food. However, if you eat a, a massive chocolate sundae, a can of sugary soft drink and a bar of chocolate, all this combined will quickly replace all the sugar that was lost during the period of exercise. The other point about exercise and fat loss isn't as hard as, but to exercise as hard as possible to burn off the fat as quickly as possible. As I've shown, well, it's not the way your body actually works. In fact, if you exercise vigorously, vigorously, then your body uses anaerobic methods for energy generation, or methods without oxygen. This is only sustainable for a very short length of time before your body gives up and you have to stop exercising. The result, you've actually burned up relatively little energy in the process. If you want to lose excess body fat, it's a combination of diet and exercise. All the exercise is absolutely no use without a healthy, balanced diet. You'll be consuming more calories than you're exercising off, and you're not going to lose any weight at all. To exercise to work and losing weight, you need to use up as much energy as possible. So whilst a 15 minute run will actually use energy rather quickly, an hour walk will actually use more calories. So you're actually far less likely to injure yourself doing a walking for an hour than you are for running for 15 minutes. Remember, Fat is an excellent store of energy, so no magic wands out there for exercising off all that stored fat. Hopefully you found this useful.